So let's start at the beginning. In our core audio essentials, we looked at the elements of audio, but in this class, we need to look at how to actually design the audio system. When you think of audio, you probably think of this. But did you ever realize that audio is part of our theaters, schools and universities, and even corporate environments? Let's take a close look. So where is the audio? Looking at this building, you might have small rooms for meetings and collaboration. Some may need just audio for announcements, such as a library. Maybe this area handles audio conferencing, or you have larger training rooms. For now, let's stick to a basic classroom to talk about the essential elements you need to know when designing a simple audio solution. Let's start with a training room. This could be a classroom at any school or university. Let's look at the first questions that as a designer you need to have answered. Before you start designing a sound system, identify what the customer needs and expects. Fidelity. What quality sound system are they expecting? A good basic system or something better than average? Sound level. Will the system be used strictly for background music or does it need to draw attention? Coverage. How even do they want the coverage to be? Is it okay for it to vary in volume within the space, or do they want it to be even throughout? Are there areas that don't need to be covered at all, or maybe just need a lower level such as the checkout area in a store? And usage. What kind of audio will be played? Music, speech, or both? And form. Do they want in-ceiling or on-wall speakers? These are just a few of the questions you will need to ask. Now that we know what the client is looking for, we need to start looking at the basic parts of the audio design. Will digital signal processors be required to control the volume and other audio characteristics of the room? What about power amplification? It's hard to determine amplifier needs until we look at the loudspeaker design. So let's start there. There are a number of different resources that you can use. We will be stepping through a few of them in this video and in others as we design our room. So the order in which we will design our room will start with loudspeakers, as this is what dictates the amplification power requirements. Next is the amplifiers. Then we'll look at controlling the audio with digital signal processors or mixers. Then finally we'll look at the areas that need microphones. We'll also look at other applications that might fall outside the standard corporate design, such as restaurants and bars or fitness centers. But let's stick with a simple training room. The JBL Pro Ceiling Speaker Configurator, also known as CSC, yields introductory information about which ceiling speaker models can be used for multiple in-ceiling distributed applications to achieve the desired level and coverage in an economical manner. This is achieved by running simulations in the software against user data entered about a room. Due to certain criteria, this software tool is used to only approximate what the best, most cost-effective solution is for achieving the minimum requirements of the application goal with sound level results within plus or minus 2 dB. If more exact computations are required, then the distributed system design software by JBL is recommended. We will discuss the distributed system design software later in another video. Based on the floor area and ceiling height of the room, the configurator automatically computes the following the three most economical loudspeaker models for that project, the quantity of speakers required to cover the area and how far apart to space them, how to tap them for 70 volt or 100 volt systems, and for systems using subwoofers, an included subwoofer utility tells how many subs to use. If any of these terms are not familiar to you, we will be trying to explain them through this video and others. Let's explore the available software features in CSC. We will start by going to the Speaker Configurator menu and to Preferences. Here we will find a global setting for the unit of measurement. We can either select English values such as feet or metric values such as meters. After selecting the desired unit of measurement, we then click OK. The selected value will be maintained after exiting CSC, so this shouldn't be a setting you need to change for every new application. Next, we will go to the new configuration found under the Speaker Configurator menu. Let's enter a project name such as Training Room. Here's a tip. If you are needing ceiling speaker suggestions for complex rooms or rooms with varying ceiling height, then it is recommended that you run multiple simulations for each section of the room or for each individual room. 
Below the project name field, you will find three radio buttons that allow you to dictate what the intended use is for ceiling speakers, be it music, paging, or both. Selecting the both option will cause CSC to use the higher SPL requirement from the music and paging selections to define the system. By default, CSC will only give you results for high impedance loudspeakers. If low impedance loudspeakers ranging between 4 and 16 ohms are required, then be sure to select one of the following options. Add low impedance speakers or view only low impedance speakers. Now let's take a quick time out to explain a couple terms that we just mentioned. SPL. This stands for sound pressure level. It's actually a ratio of the absolute sound pressure and a reference level which happens to be the lowest intensity sound that can be heard by most people. In basic terms, it's just the loudness of sound. Impedance refers to the resistance of alternating current in a circuit. Common low impedance loudspeakers are 4, 8, or 16 ohms. High impedance systems, also known as distributed systems, 70 volt or 100 volt systems, paging systems, and the list goes on. These are just comprised of high impedance loudspeakers. These type of loudspeakers allow for long distance cable runs with minimal signal loss and also allow us to connect a lot of loudspeakers to a single amp channel. That's not something we can do with low impedance loudspeakers. And then we have non-T versus T. This is just referring to wattage taps, whether the loudspeaker has one or not. What is wattage tapping? First, let's start with an analogy that has been used time and time again. Think of a power company distributing power to everyone's homes. In order to run the power through many miles of cable, resistive power loss is minimized by running the power as high voltage and low current. This is achieved by using a step-up transformer at the power station and step-down transformers at each person's home. We can apply the same thinking to power amplifiers, which we'll discuss more in a later module, and high impedance loudspeakers. At the output of the amplifier, we apply a step-up transformer, allowing us to run high voltage and low current to a number of loudspeakers, each with their own step-down transformer. Many step-down transformers intended for loudspeakers feature multiple wattage taps, allowing you to apply a small amount of power resulting in a lower SPL, or a larger amount of power resulting in a higher SPL. 